The current study is building upon previous work that we, where we demonstrated that mothers have autoantibodies to fetal brain proteins. And it was a small percentage of mothers in our first study, and through identifying what these proteins are, we now have expanded our original findings to reach 23% of the population. So we now know that 23% of mothers who have children with autism have autoantibodies that recognize key proteins that are found in the developing brain. So these proteins have a, a number of different functions, and we know they're very critical for developing a healthy neuron, and that these autoantibodies actually may block the function of those proteins. These proteins are involved in very early neuride outgrowth from neurons. They're involved in dendritic branching of neurons, all the way up to the axon outgrowth, growth cone collapse, which gives you a functioning neuron. So really, they start at the beginning of early neuron development and are involved all the way through the process to the final healthy neuron. We know if we passively transfer IgG into an animal from mothers, so taking these antibodies and putting them into an animal, that we get changes in the offspring. But So that tells us that they possibly have a pathogenic effect. However, we won't know until we really test this in the culture dish, whether they interfere with function, whether we take these proteins, put them in an animal, break, make autoantibodies in the animal, just as if they were in the mother, and test those pathways one at a time and then together. So there's work to be done to understand exactly what these antibodies are doing. The two things that are really important to remember is we can test a mother post-birth, postnatally, so very early, and know, okay, you need to get this child into intervention very early. We, we know from my colleagues up at the Mind Institute that this is a very effective treatment course for children with autism. We're doing the studies now to see how effective you know, are those children in very early intervention who come from mothers who have these antibodies? Is that a, a, a good course of treatment for these children? The other part of this is that if for family planning, we already know that the incidence is increased in mothers who've had a child with autism, so you have per, perhaps a 20% increase at risk of having a second child. Those mothers could preconception know if they truly are at risk. This is a rule in test, so it's not going to say if you're negative, you're good to go. What it will tell you is if you're positive, you will have a child with autism. I think all of the numerous studies that we've done now are confirming that it's very specific to autism in this 23% of the population. So then you have alternatives in family planning. We don't know what causes these antibodies to be formed yet. That is something else that we may never know. I've worked in autoimmunity a really long time, and there are a lot of autoimmune diseases for which we don't know how they started. However, that won't stop us from looking, but that's the reality. The other thing to remember is that once you have them, they're lifelong. So for this, in this particular case, we've looked at moms 18 years you know, after they've had their child, and they still are very positive for these antibodies. We don't know what these antibodies do in the mothers. We don't think that they do anything because the proteins that these recognize are only really upregulated in fetal development. So um, the odds of them doing anything in the mom are, are very slim, um, but there's nothing you can do to control whether you make a response to your self proteins or not. It's something, and it may have happened a long time before you ever had a child. We don't know. I mean, these are all questions that we'll, we will be looking into. If we could find what the risk factor was for this, that would really help potentially mitigate that risk.